Hello everyone, my name is LeFox. Right now we're gonna be taking a look at Jumper's newest netbook. This is their EasyBook 3 Pro. Not EasyBook Pro 3, EasyBook 3 Pro. As I'm wont to do, a lot of my reviews start off with uh, looking at these netbooks and laptops. We're gonna take a look at what's going on underneath to get a better idea of what we have available to us. What are some of the deficiencies and calling them out and seeing how things are working and making sure that they're wired correctly so that even though that they may show that they're available, we can guarantee and verify by looking at the motherboard parts. Once again, I'd like to thank GearBest for sending this out to me. I would not be able to do these reviews without them supplying me with these netbooks and notebooks. So thank you very much for to GearBest for sending this out. If you're interested in this notebook, please look in the description field in the comment section to have a link that will go directly to GearBest for you to buy. This model is a 64 gig. Uh, it's a, can be found for a little bit under 300 from GearBest every now and again. The 128 gig is sold out right now, now that I'm checking, uh, and that's about $30 more. So I would totally recommend going for the 128 gig of internal storage. Um, you could also, obviously, increase storage via this M2 slot. So without further ado, let's start talking about what we got going on here. So one of the interesting things is a lot of these netbooks and laptops from China have been using this form factor, the 2242, which is 22 millimeters wide and 42 millimeters long. In North America, at least, I've noticed that these gumstick drives that are provided are generally 2280. It's easier to, in North America to find 2280 drives at a decent price as opposed to these 2242 drives. However, having said that, in China, a lot of these netbooks and stuff are starting to use these 2242 slots. So it'll be interesting to take a look and see how prices go on as the as time goes on within the next year if 2242 drives start falling down. I have recently purchased from AliExpress a 512 gig M2 2242 and that was $110, which is three times less than what I can find in North America. Uh, b and Photo has one for 340 that's made by Transcend. So three times less, I had to pick it up. So it's king spec. I don't know what king spec is, but uh, I've digressed. We're not talking about the laptop anymore. We're talking about availability of 2242 drives. Still worthwhile. Uh, we'll see how that fares as time goes on. So one of the things that you notice is we have this ribbon cable that's going right here. So this bus is carrying this. What the, You can see that it's blue. Uh, this is USB 2 speeds. All ports are, including this one that's hardwired directly to the main board. And this micro SD and three and a half millimeter jack all travel across this this guy. You can see this little ribbon cable right here is going to connect the 2242 slot. I don't have one available to test. It would have been interesting to see what types of speeds we get through this little ribbon cable. Um, so that would be an interesting test. Unfortunately, I don't have any. I do apologize. I can't test it just yet. When I do get them in, I'll be able to start testing those in the future. Uh, here we can see that we're using a 7.6 volt battery. Apologies, I had someone walk in on me. Um, we have a 7.6 volt battery, and it's at 4,800 milliamp hour. Um, the watt hours on this should be around like 53, 50-ish watt hours. So the battery does last a while on this, but it manages to... The whole, the whole entire laptop is a little under 3 pounds, or 1.4 kilograms. Um... So it's pretty light and it manages to get a lot of longevity on this 3450, which is under here. I'm not going to remove this plate because it's all stuck together and this acts as the heatsink. You will feel the heat radiating from here out onto the bottom aluminum uh, casing. Having said that, the bottom and the top are full aluminum. So the heat does transfer through this pretty well. It's not super hot. What you'll notice is right here. Uh, on this area right here is where it gets slightly warm. It's not it's not hot by any stretch of the imagination. This large passive heatsink actually works very very well. And we can see the connectors for here. We can see the um, the connector for the monitor. You have the hinges here, pretty sturdy hinges hinges. And then we have the pigtail leads for the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and that travels all along here. Goes up, goes into the monitor casing and then radiates outward which is a standard approach and very good to see here we can actually see the dual microphones which are interesting we have one pigtail lead here and then another here so it does have dual microphones and how that works uh we can test with obs and obs does work with quick sync because 3450 does support quick sync which is one extension extra over atom 
like processors. So that's pretty much it. We're looking, I mean, quality wise, it's really good. Also, the battery looks really good. The touchpad is excellent on this. I really, really enjoy these laptops. I'm going to go ahead uh, and edit. We're going to jump ahead. I'm going to have this fully assembled and we'll take a quicker, a closer look at everything. All right, so very quickly, I just want to show how an end user's perspective on installing a 2242 slot is. You would just quickly connect it right here. Can we get a shot of those? There we go. There, there. Those are the connectors. So you kind of just slob it in and screw that little connector down. I'm going to go ahead and screw this back together. All right, let's take some closer looks at here. You can see the speaker grills, and there is no fan. It's just all passively cooled. Let's see the lines. Really, really well made. Again, the bottom shell, this, and the top are all aluminum. The insides are going to be plastics. I apologize for that wobbling a little. Okay. And this is one of the things that I actually dislike, is that it's still using a not really standard power supply, power delivery mechanism, which is one of the things that I would have preferred on this device. You can see it's using a matte display. Let's go ahead and focus on this. We'll power it up, and we'll see how long it takes. So right now I'm at the 625 mark. We just powered on. Let's see how long it takes to boot up. The EMMC that is located, that is integrated into this notebook, isn't the fastest we'll be able to quickly just jump through some benchmarks that I did real quick so we can get a general idea of how this operates I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like glossy screens and this is a matte 1080p full HD IPS screen I can do that as you can see here are the EMC speeds which are pretty standard writes are kind of low reads are decently normal um, that's, that's it. It's just a SanDisk EMMC. This is a 64 gig. This is the only one they've supplied me with. This is what you should expect with the 128 gig as well. These are Geekbench 4 scores, which single threaded. We are around 20, 30% greater than, um, uh, 8750 Atom Cherry Trail type stuff. So CPU is still around the same speed as Cherry Trail. And it's also six watt. They say the SDP is four watt. This chipset is still 6 watt no matter which way you slice it. Here are the speeds for the USB sticks, which are pretty bad. I know that this drive writes much faster than this, but you can see we're, we're still limited to USB 2 speeds. Uh, unfortunately, the memory configuration, even though this is 6 gigs of RAM, is not in dual channel, so it's only single channel, and that will make the graphics side of things suffer really badly. Again, here's the micro SD uh, speeds. Again, not really good under USB 2 speeds are what you should be expecting. So this is left and right. Um, it's pretty subpar performance for USB and speeds. But if we go into like OBS, uh, one of the things that this is not like Cherry Trail is that you can record. So if we just started recording, it does support uh, Intel's QuickSync, which is an extension that is available on uh, Apollo Lake, which is not available on Cherry Trail. You can see that CPU usage on OBS is very, very low. A lot of the CPU usage that you see is from, well, everything else that's running your task manager, desktop Windows manager. These are just the other things that are running. Uh, we have my Windows Defender kicking in right now for God knows what reason. So uh, that's it. I mean, the overall, the performance of this is an excellent, excellent netbook. We can go real quickly. This is a Street Fighter 4 benchmark. The only thing that you really need to look at is this right here. Uh, and Cherry Trail 8750 will get up to 60 FPS. So gaming-wise, this is not a good gaming netbook at all. However, it is an excellent netbook for just navigating the web. Excellent battery life. I'm getting around four hours, five hours, depending on what I'm doing. Just straight uh, netbook stuff, YouTube, low, uh, medium brightness. Uh, everything works very, very well. Let me see if I can... What is this? This is my speed test for when I was typing on this laptop. Keyboard is excellent. Trackpad is excellent. I'm really, really a fan of Chinese trackpads, and this one is no different. Jumper netbooks are excellent. Uh, here you can see my speed is at 71.28 words per minute. My accuracy is 96.77. This was done on this laptop, uh, on this netbook. For the price, it's an excellent, excellent netbook. Again, the description, uh, the link for this is going to be in the description field or in the comment section. It's going to go to GearBest. Thank you so much for watching. I really do very much recommend uh, Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro.